All right, here we go. My name's Jeff Kay, and you're listening to episode 350 of the world famous West Virginia Surf Report podcast. I need some help with something, my friends. I need you to. I need, I need your input on this deal. I have a little, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzling over something. I have a little conundrum. <laughs> I think that's the first time I ever used that word on here um, or in my life, maybe. But anyway, so the other day I was driving to work, right, and I, and I was I was merging onto Interstate 81, the Devil's Parkway, and um, you know I I. I I, I do it the right way. I don't do it the way uh, many of the locals do. I've never encountered some of the stuff that goes on that that goes on here. I never encountered it anywhere else. I've lived all over the country. Never seen the shit that goes on here anywhere else. Like they get they they drive out to the end of the uh, entrance ramp, stop, turn on their blinkers and then wait for an opening, and then join the flow of traffic from a sitting still position. <laughs> that is not what, that's not the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to build up speed and then slide into the flow of traffic and head on down the road, right? However, it takes a little bit of help from your, uh, from your, 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 your uh, partners in, in, in driving. I don't know what you want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're a, uh, your other your your co co drivers, they need to they need to give you room, and um, that's another part of it. That's that's another part of the whole equation. They have to give you room. You have to uh, like if you come up on a situation where there's a merging, you know, where people are merging onto the onto the interstate, you either have to get over in the left lane or you slow down or speed up, creating a gap. You have to create a gap. For the person to, to to go to get over, you know, that's what you do. That's that's a, a contract that we have with each other, right? All right. So I'm I'm merging. I, I, I swivel my head around, and I, I look in the mirror and all that, and I make sure there's nobody around. And uh, there was a car in the left lane, you know, and I'm I'm merging into the into the right lane. So they're in the left lane, and they're kind of far back. They're they're back, you know, a ways. So I start sliding over, start the, you know, I, I slide over as I do every day, multiple times a day. And the person in the left lane, as I start to get over, they change lanes. <sighs> they change lanes into the area where I'm trying to merge on. And um, block, I almost hit the guy or, or he, he almost hit me. I don't know. It's open to interpretation. We almost bumped, you know, you know what I'm saying? The guy, the guy's over in the left lane. I'm trying to merge on. He changes lanes and blocks me so I can't get on. Either on purpose or oblivious. And that's what, that's the, the question. Is this guy an asshole or is he just oblivious? You know? And that's the question, and I and I, and I don't know the answer, but uh, I just don't understand. How could you be? I don't know, either one. I mean, even if you are oblivious and you don't have asshole intentions, I think you're still an asshole because you're you're only you're not taking anybody else into consideration. You know, you're only thinking about yourself. And I don't understand how you could possibly be that way. I mean, when I think about that, I, I, my blood was boiling, and it's starting to boil right now, just thinking about it. I mean, I was trying to get on the interstate, and they change lanes right when I'm getting over into me. They change lanes into me while I'm trying to get on the interstate. The entrance ramp is, ramp is ending. Do you know what I'm saying? You hear what I, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? I'm getting fired up just talking about it. Like, what in the hell? What is wrong with everybody? What is the matter with people? And I just wonder, is, is, do you think that person is an asshole? 
or do you think they're just oblivious? And I see this all the time. There's so many instances where I ask that question. And I always used to think that they were assholes. I mean, all the time. For years, decades, I thought, we're just, the whole world's populated with assholes. And I don't know. I think it's just, I think I, I've come to the conclusion that people just are completely oblivious. They don't know, they don't have any any sense of what's going on around them. They're thinking about themselves. They're, they're thinking about something else. And they don't even take into consideration anybody else but themselves. So they are assholes, but they don't have asshole ten. What's the word I'm looking for? They don't have asshole... Uh, what, you know, they're, they don't. They're, they don't. They're not meaning to be assholes. <laughs> they're they're just assholes by uh, by being oblivious. God, I'm struggling a little bit, but you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I like uh, like uh, like when you're walking into a store and there's somebody in front of you. Like you're walking into a store, say Coles, just for instance. In fact, this just happened. So um, it's actually happened. So, you, so me and Tony are walking into Coles. There's a woman in front of us, right? She goes in, and this, there's not a huge gap between us and her. And she just lets the door slam right in our face. You know, she doesn't hold it for us. She doesn't hold us, hold the door for us at all. Just lets the door slam right in our face. Asshole or oblivious? What do you think? I don't know. I think it's oblivious. I think that's what it is. I think people are are only uh, thinking about themselves, and also um, I told you this story about there's this there's this fancy ass donut place that we've been to exactly one time, and I don't think I'll ever go back. I mean, it's called Duck Donuts. It's one of these places that opens up, and it's like it causes this big stir. You know, everybody in the whole area has to visit it. Everybody's talking about it. There's a buzz. There's a there calls there's so many people going to these places. There's like a helicopters flying over, you know, you know, checking out the traffic problem. It's one of those deals. Same thing happened when Popeye's Fried Chicken opened here. I was like, Popeye's, what the? Like, why? That stuff's trash. <laughs> I've lived in places where they had those, and they were just, you know, third tier fast food restaurants, in my opinion. And they opened one here a few years ago, and it caused this big giant thing. I mean, everybody's uh, the whole place was a buzz because of this Popeye's fried chicken. You know, if there's something that's not available in your area, you know, people get all excited about it. You know, and it's just you know that stuff sucks. But anyway, so this place, and I don't know how we got caught up in this. I don't know how this happened, and I feel I feel ashamed. Really, it gets right down to it. We went to this Duck Donuts right after they opened. And it's one of these deals where the I don't know it's like every every donut's hand dressed I guess each donut is the same it's like a, a cake donut but they put all kinds of stuff on it you know it's handmade right in front of you almost like it, it, it's it's fairly ridiculous right but it's extremely popular and I don't know it's expensive and it's kind of like. Uh, you know, kind of uh, gourmet, I guess. At least people think it is. So we ended up going to this thing maybe like two weeks after it opened, and um, it was a 45-minute wait to get donuts. I can't imagine, when I think back on this, I can't imagine myself waiting in line that long. Okay, but we did, and uh, they had these big placards up. It had a, had a list of all the, all the, uh, the donuts that they sell there. And they're all like weird, you know, strange, very you know, di different stuff than you would think, right? So they had them everywhere. There's like on the windows, like like the line went down the outside the store and down the sidewalk. So in the windows of the store there are the menus, and inside the store, when you get inside there, you still have to wait a long time. You're still not anywhere near the cash register. There's menus. Everywhere, giant menus hanging on the wall. You get so, and every single person that gets up there, so they're waiting in line for 40, 45 minutes. That's not a joke. You, the people, I'm standing there watching, and uh, oh, by, uh, by the way, by the time we got to the door, we decided what we're going to order. And I had it inside the note, in the notes, 
app in my phone. I had a list of the of the we wanted to get a dozen. I said, give give me two of each of these, and I had them listed in the uh, in the in the notes app of my phone, right? So that I could be ready, I could be prepared when I get up there, because I I'm cons- considerate to people behind me, you know. I don't want to be a part of the problem. I just want to get through the thing. I want to be prepared. I don't want to be up. Okay, we're standing there waiting, and every single person, every single person, they're standing in line for 40 minutes. They get up there, and they're like, uh, let's see. Uh, what do you, okay. Now, what's on this, uh, what's on this Charlie Brownie? What's this one? What you, what's that one got on it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about that. Uh, let's see, maybe. I think they don't have any idea. They're standing there for 40 minutes by uh, 10-foot-tall placards that have, <laughs> that have every the menu, and it has the description of what's uh, of each one of them. And they, they when they get up there, they don't have any idea. Then they, as soon as they get it to the cash register, that's when they start contemplating what they want. What the hell's that? It's like some kind of mental illness. It's making me. It's making me insane. Is that asshole or is that oblivious? What is that? You tell me what that is. I, I don't know. But either way, it pisses me off. I mean, oh my god. So I got up there and I ordered the thing. I, I said I want a dozen donuts. I want two of each. And I listed them off. And the guy. Right, it took me. It took us like I don't know, fifteen seconds maybe to order and pay. You know. And um, I said, how many people, I said, just out of curiosity, how many people actually have their orders ready when they get up here? He goes, not many, maybe three in 10. <laughs> it's like, it felt like he, it felt like he had a, he'd, he'd given us some thought. He goes, yeah, not very many, three in 10, maybe. <sighs> so I don't know. Is that asshole or is that oblivious? Can you, can you, what do you, what do you think about that? And, you know, and then I was at the grocery store. I think I was ranting about this um, recently. I was at a grocery store. I was going to buy ice cream. And uh, I get up there, and I'm standing there kind of deciding. There's like 10,000 different flavors of ice cream. I'm standing there, you know, looking through the glass doors at the in the coolers, the freezers or whatever, trying to decide what flavor. Because they're always, it's always like two for seven Two for ten, two for nine, I don't know. So you have to buy two. Well, you don't have to, but, uh, you know, you know, there's no no, there's no shame in buying two. You know, so I'm standing there trying to decide, and people come in between, between me <laughs> and the freezers and, and, and open it up and, and, and start rooting around in there. Like, I'm in, you know, they, they come, they squeeze between me and the coolers, and they don't even say excuse me or anything. It's like as if they don't know I'm there. It's as if they're not even aware that I'm there. Do you know what I mean? It's not like the guys, they're just being shitty about it. It's just I don't, I sincerely don't think that they have any idea of their surroundings. The, their, what's going on in their life is the only thing that matters. And they, they're oblivious and then there's the people at the ATMs. I could go on and on. Where they, you know, they they do a transaction. I don't know. Some of these people are on there punching so many buttons. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're like applying for a mortgage through the ATM. I don't know if you could do that. But and then they finally get they, some some money gets spit out, and then the receipt comes out, and they stand there. They stand there blocking the ATM. They're finished, and they're studying their receipt. And there's a line of people waiting to use the ATM. You know what I mean? I mean, you're familiar with this, and there's fast food people. They don't know, you know. Ah, anyway, I could go on and on. But what do you think that is? I think it's oblivious. I think that's what it is. I don't think most people are 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 just blatantly assholes. I don't. I don't think I'm giving people the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that they're just doing it to push people's buttons. I mean, there's a certain element that does that. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that that never happens. But I'm saying probably nine out of ten instances, it's oblivious. People are just got their head up their ass, and they um they don't know what's going on around them, and they never even think about. They're not even aware. You're not. They're not even aware that you're there. They're not even aware that you're there. You know, 
What do you think? Do you agree with me, or am I, or am I way off on that? Anyway, fired me up when I was getting ready to slide over into the lane. Good thing I looked over again. You know, I already checked it out, and everything was clear, and I was sliding over, and I changed lanes into me as I'm merging onto the interstate. Do you understand? Do you understand my frustration? <laughs> I mean, uh, God, what the... Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, people are uh, uh, humanity. Uh, it's like every time you bring humans into something, it gets ruined. I'm going to West Virginia on Monday. I have a chance to be out there with my co-drivers or whatever I called them in that clumsy area of, of the podcast. <laughs> you know, I'll be out there on the road for many hours. It takes like nine, nine or ten hours to drive down there. It's it's a long ass drive and my ass will be I mean I'm gonna have to like I don't know I might have to go see some some you know hire somebody to to massage my ass this good like some kind of a just get an ass rub like somebody in there in in the Charleston West Virginia area that can provide a uh a quality ass rub I'm sure I'm sure I can find somebody <laughs> but anyway uh Anyway, um, I'm doing that Monday, coming back Thursday, I believe. That's the plan. And um, I going to go down there and see the folks, see my mom and dad. They're getting ready to go back to Florida. So uh, they're going to go to Florida at the end of the month, at the end of October. And, uh, you know, we'll go down there and see them before they go. And I'm planning to have some more hot dogs, West Virginia hot dogs. I, I, I revisited the uh, – there's this blog – it's one of those blog spot. It's one of those free blogs that people used to have a long time ago. It's still being updated. It's really good. I mean, this guy, him, and there's like I guess it's more than one person, but they just review hot dogs in West Virginia, and they, you know, it's the West Virginia hot dog is chili slaw mustard and onion. That's the uh, that's the 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 classic West Virginia hot dog. It's a it's it's a taste treat, you know. It's it's a conglomeration that just I mean it's it's perfect, you know. You got the semi spicy and uh, warm chili with the sweet and cool uh, coleslaw, and the mustard and onion. Of course, is a perfect hot dog topping. I, in my opinion, the mustard goes on first. There's controversy about that, but anyway, uh, you know. Th- I'm going to go, uh, one of the ones that they rate the highest is nit- the Nitro, uh, Nitro's a town, nit- the Nitro Dairy Queen. And that's not far from where my parents live. And I went there last time. Fantastic. It's some little, it's a bizarre little Dairy Queen. It's like they operate outside the Dairy Queen corporate, uh, they just do whatever they want. I don't know. I don't understand it really. And it's a bizarre place because they don't have anything. All they have is hot dogs, I think. I think they have hot dogs and then a limited amount of ice cream offerings. It's a very strange, the way it's laid out, there's no, in, it's, it's a drive through only, but they have like this uh, weird ass, uh, like a deck or something, but it's not attached to the building. It's really strange. But they have great hot dogs. And uh, I'm going to head... Definitely going to hit there. We went to Hillbilly Hot Dogs last time. That's more of a tourist trap. They have good hot dogs, but, it's, you know, it's touristy. It's a, I don't know. The last time we went there, we had to wait in line for like an hour or two hours or some kind of insane crap. I think they were having the Mothman uh, Mothman uh, Festival down down in Point Pleasant. but uh, So it was, like, really crowded. I don't know. I don't think we need to go back to Hillbilly Hot Dogs, but I'm definitely going to hit the Nitro uh, Nitro Dairy Queen for some of their hot dogs, and I might hit up some a couple. I'm going to do some more reading on this blog and see what uh, you know where else they in in the in you know. I don't want to travel. I don't want to drive hours to go get a hot dog, but you know around where my parents live, I'm going to do that. So you know, it's one of the things, and I get I got to get that. Uh, that West Virginia beer they sell down there called uh, Devil Ann's IPA. Mm, good stuff. And then I'm going to see, you know, I'm going to see my mom and dad, see my, you know, some aunts and uncles and all that jazz. So it'll be fun. I'm coming back Thursday and I'm off. So I'm off nine days in a row. Oh, I took the entire week and then two, two weekend days on each end. 
beautiful, wonderful. It's going to be, I need, I need a rest. I need, I need away from that. I need to get away from that place for a while. It's, it's killing me. It's crushing me, crushing my soul, crushing the will to live. Um, the other day I went to, uh, I was at Sheets coming home from work. It was uh, Thursday, I think. I was like, I want to. I don't. I want to buy a. You know. I want to. I want to have a beer when I get home. So, and I, we didn't have any. And uh, so I stopped at Sheets over in um, Dixon City, which is a town next to us. They have a beer cave in there. That's what they call them. It's like a walk-in cooler with, full of beer. You know. And they have pretty good stuff in there. It's a conven. It's a convenience store, but they have like they have a a, a decent lineup of craft beers and stuff. So I stopped in there and I bought a couple of the just a couple of singles of uh uh new new trail new trail uh Broken Hills IPA one of the best beers in the world and I just that's I just bought those two so I go up there there's this guy that works in there and he's always commenting on my age because I have to show him my ID he looks at it he he always makes comments he goes on and on and on about my age and um. It feels like he's never seen. It's like he doesn't realize it's, that he's talked to me before. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how that's possible. I mean, I go in there maybe once a week, and I have the same conversation with this guy every time about my age. You know, he's, he's always making comments about my. You know, and um, he's like, this the other day he's look at it. He goes, "Oh, young man, young man." I'm like, "Uh huh." He goes, "You're about five years older than I am." I said, "Okay." <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I don't know what the who gives a shit. Just can you just ring up my? Uh, I mean, this is what's going through my head. I said, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> he goes, uh, I guess you're a boomer. I said, I don't know. I said, I mean, maybe. I don't know if I, if I am. It's at the very ass end of it. He goes, yeah, cuts off. You know, it's uh, you're the last year. I said, I don't really know how it works. He goes, yeah, you're a boomer. I'm an, I'm I'm Gen X. I said, yeah, well, I said I'd rather be Gen X. I don't like that boomer crap. He goes, why? Why? Boomers are great. Boomers are awesome. I said, I never hear anybody say that. I mean, all I, you know, boomers are like mocked, ridiculed, and, uh, you know, it's like dismissed. Anything they had to say is just dismissed as just some grouchy old bastard, you know. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, boomer. You know, that kind of stuff. So whatever, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know, <sighs> you know. He goes, well, I mean, there's no, there's no shame in being a boomer. I said, can you just ring my shit up? And I, I don't really. I said, okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> and then next time I'll go in there, he'll, he'll, he'll go on and on and too about it. It'll be like the, a very similar conversation, but um, and he'll act like he's never seen me before, you know. And he'll call me young man. He always calls me young man. You know, I don't care for that. I guess, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't bother me that much. But, you know, you're a boomer yelling it across the store. Uh, let's see. Oh, the other day I was walking. Or I went to the uh, Cracker Barrel at lunch at work. Sometimes I go over there and have dinner because I don't want to eat garbage anymore. You know, I don't want to have any more garbage. So I go to Cracker Barrel every once in a while. It's kind of expensive for lunch at work, you know, but, and it takes a little bit longer than, uh, you know, obviously going to McDonald's or something. It doesn't take that long though. or pretty fast. But anyway, I was there and, um, I was sitting there by myself, which I have no issue doing. Some people seem to have a problem with that eating out in a, eating out alone. Don't bother me in the least. So I'm sitting in there. They always put all the people, all the men, it's always men, men sitting in there eating alone. They always put us together. I don't know what they're doing. They're maybe like these guys must be lonely. Let's see if these can make a friend. They can make friends with each other. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what their motivation is, but they always put the single men, the men that are dining alone, together. Right. So I'm sitting in there with with, with the other losers. Probably every one of them is like most of them are like men traveling on business or something. I don't know. I, have no, I don't know what. They're, but anyway, we're all sitting in there. And um, there's this uh, painting of, uh, it's like a, a an art print of a, a George Washington painting hanging there, framed. You know how they have all that, sh- all that crap hanging on the walls? 
So, so, and this old man comes strolling through there, man and woman. The guy's wearing like one of those uh, military hats. I don't know if it said Korea. I have a feeling it was Korea. You know, how people were like veterans wear those caps that have, you know, where they served, that kind of thing. And um, he stops right in front of that uh, George Washington painting and stands at attention and snaps off a, a crisp military salute. A paint, painting of George Washington. I was like, all right, well, there you go. There you go. That guy's patriotic. Never seen that before. Man, that goes back to the original, man. That's the OG, <laughs> George Washington. You know what I'm saying? That goes back to the uh, the original commander-in-chief. Anyway, um, so I thought that was interesting. And finally, I have a call came in from our old friend Patrick, came in over the hotline. So let's check it out. Here it is. Hey, Jeff. Patrick here. Hey, <laughs> me and my girlfriend started watching uh, your uh, suggested show of, of Naked Attraction. And um, <laughs> instantly enough, it started off as a good laugh. You know, we were watching and like, man, a little bit of critiquing and this and that. And, and <laughs> yeah, you're right. The, the one, there was one episode. I watched the one episode that you talked about. Uh, in the, in the, on the podcast where the, the, guy, the guy's unit had a, had a, a, like a dog leg in it, had a knee. It went off to the side. But man, half these dudes, these dudes have got some power tools on them. Man, these, these dudes are, they're, these dudes are packing. And so, um, we watched about three or four episodes of this and the pro, the problem, uh, I had, and I'm going to put this out there for anybody else that might be watching this with their with their boyfriend or girlfriend. Was so we're watching the show, and uh, I, there was a the girl in green. I was, there was a girl in green and like a girl in orange, and like the girl the green. I was like, oh yeah, the girl. It's going to be the girl in green. It's going to be the girl in green. And like the guy went with some other body. I was like, ah, as we'll see. The problem happened where. I let it slip where I would have picked the girl in green. So I wouldn't say it started a fight, but it definitely started a discussion uh, between me and my girl. So that's what you like? You like, I'm like, no, you know, don't get me wrong. I love my girlfriend. We get along fantastically, and I love her. But it's, it's I, I'm putting this out here because if anybody else – wants to watch this with their with their boyfriend friend or girlfriend, um, play along with the game and not necessarily play along with like what you would have went for and maybe kind of keep the comments to yourself. Just to avoid any friction if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> fun show. Thank you for the turn on. It, it's uh, it's hilarious. Uh thanks Jeff. See ya. Yeah, I'm and uh that naked attraction. I only made it through one and a half episodes, and um, yeah, I mean those guys. Uh, like I said before, I think that they're picking the guys. I think they're cherry picking. I mean, this, this is not just a. These are not just a, a sample, a random sample of guys from the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? They go. They they make their decisions are being made, and those decisions are. I think based on length and girth, you know, be on that show because those guys, some of those guys have got the big, like you said, <laughs> like you said, they're they're they got they got power tools, you know. This is not uh, this is not a random sample. I think this is a uh, it's dangerous because it's going to make people think that that's what you know that's what's out there, and I don't think that's true. <laughs> I don't think that's the. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. But anyway, it seems like, uh, I mean, some of those guys had normal-sized units, as you call them. But it feels like it was, uh, the, the big schlongeronis are, are way overrepresented on that show. But anyway, but, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'll watch any more of it. You said it caused, almost caused, like, uh, a conversation. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that happening. You should, you should oh, man, sure. Look at that, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I can see. You have to 
<laughs> you have to be careful the way, the way you uh, react to these things. You know, you guys, you can't you can't be like, oh, oh man, if we're up to me, I'd go with the green one, the uh, the great lady in the green booth. Woohoo! I mean, you can't do that. <laughs> I understand. I mean, I I know. I understand that. Uh, I've been in that situation. It's been, you know, we're old now, and she's she'd probably if Tony, I wouldn't watch that with Tony. I don't think she'd be like, I don't know what she'd think about it. But um, if, if we watched it and I said something like that now, she'd be like, whatever, you know. <laughs> but you know, when we were younger, she might have had a, you know, we might have had a discussion like you uh, like you uh, talk about. I don't know, but yeah, um, that's a it's quite a. Uh, Quite a bizarre show. I mean, I, I the first episode, I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this! What and how did this ever get on television?" Naked Attraction on HBO Max or Max, as they call it. There's four seasons of it already on there. It's all it's a British show, and uh, everybody gets naked on there, and including I don't know. I'm surprised the the host isn't naked. The host stays clothed. Everybody else naked. And I'm talking full frontal, zooming in on each part. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? And it's a dating show, right? And they they're just I'm, I'm gonna go. So this guy goes out. This, this woman. <coughs> I'm coughing. I'm sorry. This this woman goes out on this date with this guy. He's got a he's got a a tattoo, <laughs> a tattoo of, of an elephant's face on, a, you know, surrounding his uh, his penis, which is a, a gigantic, uncircumcised, and that thing's like hanging down like the trunk, you know. And he's got a fake leg, and I, I don't know. And she chose him. She went out on a date with him, and they were still together like two months later. <laughs> they hit it off. I mean, it was a match made in heaven. Old elephant man over there. With his big old oh god, I don't know. Some of those things look gnarled and uh, bent. It looked like something I don't know. Some something got it caught in some kind of a piece of machinery or something. Things mutilated. I don't know. I mean, I watched one episode and I started watching a second one. And I'm like, I've had enough of this. I don't want to watch any more of this. You know, I don't. I don't know. It's too much. Too much. Four seasons, man. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry about the argument or the semi-argument, Patrick. I can understand that. Yep, I know. I've been there. Oh, I've been there. And um, thanks for calling. And if you want to call in like Patrick did, it's easy to do. We have a telephone number all set up for you, a whole infrastructure set up for you. The number, 570-290-8151. Give me a call around the clock, 24 hours a day, and leave a message, ask a question, make a comment. Whatever's on your mind. It's just voicemail, and it's a pretty slick little uh, system they got set up there. So give me a call, 570-290-8151. Also, if you want two of these a week instead of a measly one, I, I do an extra episode every week for patrons. And if you want to be a patron, it's easy to do as well. Just head on over to patreon.com. It's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Jeff K. Sign up for a $4 or more monthly donation. Put it on a credit card, and it comes out at the beginning of the month. It costs four dollars or more. You can you can you, you can contribute any amount you want, but four dollars will unlock the audio and it'll give you an extra episode every week. Not every once in a while, not every month. That's for suckers. Every week. So do it up. Patreon.com slash Jeff K. And the WVSR.com is the center of the Surf Report universe, as, and SurfReportPod.com is the home of the expanded show notes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So check those out as well. And we're at the end of this thing. Thank you guys for listening. The next one will be over on the Patreon side. And until then, hope you guys have yourselves a fine, fine day. I'll see you. Bye. Ass rub.